This is the new part three for the bicycle seat tutorial. In part two, we built the seat, and in part three, what we are going to do is build the mounting rails and these mounting blocks that anchor the rails into the underside of the seat. In part two, we purposely skipped over step three and step four, which were the layouts for the rails. We are now going to go back and draw those. I'll first roll back to step three, which is the rail top layout, and I will make the top guideline image visible for that. Here we see the guideline sketch for the rail, which is actually an image file that's been inserted into SolidWorks. And if we edit the sketch that I've drawn for the layout, we can see that the rail has a straight portion, angled, straight again, angled, and then finally straight. This is the nose part of the seat, and here's the tail. We just turn on the top layout of the seat so you can see that in relation. When I drew this sketch, I pretty fairly closely followed the underlying image for the rail. The most important part of the rail is this section here, which is about 100 millimeters long and about 110 millimeters from the nose. You can change this by a few millimeters one way or the other, but you don't want to change this too much. These other sections you have a little bit more freedom to change at the rear and at the front. The other important aspect of this is the distance between the rail on this side and the rail on this side. I've only drawn one rail in this layout sketch, but I have a center line going through it here. And the distance from the rail through the center line to where its mirrored twin would be needs to be 43 millimeters. Let me hide the underlying image so you can see that a little more clearly. So if we had the mirrored imaged rail right here, this rail to this rail is 43 millimeters, and you cannot violate that, otherwise the seat will not fit properly into the seat clamps. I've also drawn into this view a block here and a block here, which represents those mounting blocks that anchor the tail of the rail and the nose of the rail into the seat. Closing this sketch, I'm going to now roll forward to see the front view sketch of the rail. So here's our front view sketch of the rail, and I will turn on the underlying guideline image for that and edit that sketch. And you can see again, I've fairly closely followed the image underlay that indicates approximately where that rail needs to go. And I'll turn on the front view layout of my seat here so we can see that a little better. So here is the side view of, or actually the front view in this case, since we're on the front plane, of the rear mounting block, just going up to the top of the seat here. Actually, this is the rear mounting block, and then we have the front mounting block here for the rail going into the nose of the seat and up to the top surface. So again, let me turn off the underlying image here to make this a little more clear. And again, the most important part of our rail sketch is going to be this section right here. This has to go up at about a five, well, it does have to go up at a five degree angle, so don't change that angle. And you want to keep it approximately in this location with respect to the seat, but you can move it up and down a little bit. Right now I've got a 55 millimeters with respect to the top of the seat, but I can always move that down a little bit but still maintaining five degrees or moving this up a little bit so it's tucked a little bit more up into the seat but the five degrees is important the other thing that is very important is that we have proper alignment between corresponding points in the front view layout and the top view layout this point and this point represent the same point on the rail this point and this point represent the same point, this point and this point, this point, this point, this point and this point, and finally this point and this point. These corresponding points all have to be the same distance along the x direction from the origin. 
The easiest way to do that is usually to use a vertical relation. So I'm going to go to this point here and just delete the vertical relation that I already had here. And let's say that I just drew this at some arbitrary location. What I want to do, if I'm looking straight at my view, here's the point I want to make a relation to. Here's the corresponding point that it needs to be related to. And if I make a vertical relation between here and sometimes it's hard to get it in this view, so I'm going to roll the view a little bit using my arrow keys. Again, making a vertical relation from this point to this point, choosing vertical. That will pull this into alignment so that they are both the same distance away from the origin in the x direction. Some people find this a little confusing or think it's odd that you can use a vertical relation to align a point in one layout sketch with a point in a different plane on another layout sketch. If that makes you feel uh, a little bit uncertain about things, let me show you another trick you can use. I'm going to close this sketch, go back to my step three layout, which is the top layout, and I can always just draw some construction lines that visually help me out. I'm going to draw a vertical construction line going from each of these corner points of the rail, just going to a horizontal line that's passing through the origin. Let me turn off my underlying sketches. So here's the end of the rail, here's the beginning of the rail, and I've just drawn these sort of helper lines going up to a line which essentially is the x-axis point piercing or coincident rather to the origin here. Now we'll go back to our front layout and I'll delete some of these relations on these points and I'll delete one here just to demonstrate so I can move these points around now. And in this case, I'm going to add vertical relations with center lines to these points. And I'm just going to make a coincident relation to the end point of this little helper guideline from the top layout, making those coincident. And I'll make this point and this point coincident. You can see how this line is sort of folding through the x-axis. You can kind of imagine that if you were to unfold this top view downward so that these lines went straight down, these corresponding points, such as this point and this point, would just be directly in alignment with each other, and this point and this point would be directly in alignment with each other, just as if you had done an orthographic view with all of the views aligned with each other. If I look at this view straight on, and I use my arrow keys to roll it about the x-axis, we can see this point here in my front layout, and this is the point in my top layout. They stay perfectly aligned as I roll that view, meaning that they are the same distance away from the origin in this x-direction. So you might like that technique better because it just helps you visually see what this point is actually aligned with in this view here. Let me edit this sketch one more time. And I'll just point out that this point here in this mounting block has to correspond to this point here. And this point here corresponds to this point. We have similar alignments that have to occur in the back where this mounting point here is in alignment here, and this point of the block is in alignment with this point here from the top layout. I'll also point out that if this is the center line of the rail, I've allowed about seven millimeters of material from the center line of the rail to the bottom of the mounting block. You can make it a little bit different, but that seemed to be a good amount of material because the rail itself is going to end up being seven millimeters in diameter, which is three and a half millimeters per side.
I'm going to roll the model forward now so that we can get to the mounting rail features. And at this point, the seat, of course, has already been made. And we might as well just hide the seat at this point. So going up into our solid bodies folder, I'll just hide the seat. And I'll make sure that my mounting rail layouts are visible. And some of my seat sketches are still visible, so I will just hide all of those in the seat boundary. leaving me just with the two rail layout sketches. And what I need to do is make a three-dimensional rail sketch, which is going to be the projection of this front layout and the top layout. So we've done this before. First thing we will do is make a sketch on the front plane. And we need to copy these lines into the sketch. So I'll just hold my control key down, click on these lines, and go to Convert Entities and finish that sketch. And now on my top view, or rather my top plane, I'll make a new sketch and copy these entities from the top layout sketch of the rail, finish the sketch, and then go into insert, curve, projected, sketch on sketch option, and select the two sketches that I just created. And that gives me my three-dimensional projected curve, which we can see is going down and up and also in and out at the same time. Now, one problem with this is we have these sharp corners to our rail, and a real rail is a bent piece of wire that's going to have radii wherever the bent corners are. So the easiest way for us to do this is to copy this into a 3D sketch and add the corner fillets there. So going into 3D sketch, which is underneath our sketch here on the command manager, we can just simply copy this entire sketch in using convert entities. So I will click on the sketch in the feature tree, convert entities, and there we have our entire sketch copied in all at once. Now that we have the curve copied in, we can easily add fillets at these corners. And I'm going to add something like a 20 millimeter fillet at each corner. And I will hide the underlying projected rail curve. So we can see that we have this one nice smooth path that we can use for sweeping the rail. At this point, what we want to do is add a plane that is going to start at the end of this sweep path, and that's going to have our profile on it, which is a, just a circle that we will sweep along this path. Instead of adding the plane to the endpoint of this three-dimensional path, I'm actually going to add it to the endpoint of this point in my layout sketch. That way, if anything ever goes wrong with my 3D path here and I have to remake it, I don't have to worry about the plane uh, disappearing or having an error. So going into Features, Reference Geometry, Plane, I'm going to make a new plane, which is parallel to my right plane here and passing through this point here. And because this sketch was partially made from a projection of this sketch, that means that this point and this point both lie on this plane one that I just created. Now I can make a new sketch on this plane. Just make a simple circle. Make it seven millimeters in diameter. And I want to pierce the center of the circle to this beginning line segment of my 3D path. So holding down my control key, I'll hold on to the center of the circle and this line segment here and select Pierce. 
finish that, now I'm ready to make my sweep for the rail. So I'm going to hide this plane. I don't need to see that anymore. I don't need to see this layout sketch anymore either, or this layout sketch. So here we just see our profile and our path. We're ready to do a sweep. Our profile, the first box, is the circle. Our path is this 3D sketch. Here is our rail. Now if we go to the top of our feature tree, we should see that we have now two solid bodies in our part file. I will reshow the seat body itself. And here is the rail, and here is the seat. Of course, we need a second rail here, which we will mirror to the other side, but we aren't going to do that right away. The next steps we want to do is build the rear mounting block. So we need to have a plane to start that block on, and we are going to extrude it up into the underside of the seat surface. To do this, I'm going to make my front layout for the rail visible again, because this shows me where the bottom of the mounting block is going to be, and it also shows me where the center of the rail in the rear is going to be. So I can just make a new plane, which is going to be parallel to the top plane. So going back to my Reference Geometry Plane, selecting the top plane and selecting either this point or this point in my layout will give me the location of the bottom of this rear mounting block. And while I'm at it, I can also create a plane which is going to be parallel to the top plane and pass through this section of the rail. So top plane, Reference Geometry, it's already selected the top plane. I'll just select this endpoint here. And if I look here at my planes, I've got two planes going through here. The first plane is going to be used for extruding this block. And I'll show you later what the second plane is going to be used for. Pulling back down here. In order to make this block, I now need to also make my top view of the rail visible. So here's the shape of the block from the top view. I'm going to draw on this plane that I made that was going through this point here. So I'm making a new sketch. I'm going to copy these four lines from my layout sketch. And I'm going to do an extrusion, which is going to go up to the underside of the seat. So extruded boss base. And instead of blind, I'm going to say up to surface and select this under surface of the seat. And we see in the preview, it's going to just end on that surface of the seat. And what I want to do is actually leave merge result unchecked. I do not want to merge the block with anything. Now the next step, which you don't really have to do, but it's kind of nice, is to actually put a hole in the block where the rail is going to plug into. And that's where this other plane comes into play, this one here that we put through this point. So what we're going to do is sketch on that plane, looking directly at that. What I'm going to do is just revolve a hole into that block using this top layout sketch as my reference. So just making a rectangle and drawing it out like this. So it's going to the end of the rail and also to the face of the block. I know that this block, or I'm sorry, I know that this hole needs to be seven millimeters in diameter. So what I'm going to do is draw a little center line right along this line of the rectangle. And then I'm going to dimension this by clicking on this line, the center line, and then dragging out to this side. And then making this seven. Let's look at this from underneath now. 
what we're going to do is make a revolved cut now with this rectangular shape and that's going to create the hole that this rail plugs into. So going to features, revolved cut, it's going to default to using this center line as the axis that it rotates the cut around. So we are going to make this go through 360 degrees of course and we only want this hole to be cut into the block not into anything else. So on the feature scope we uncheck auto select and then make sure that we are selecting just this block. Finish the feature. We have a hole going in there now and now you can see like a hard little edge where the rail is going in. Now this block looks well, pretty blocky and pretty unfinished, so we can add some fillets going along the long dimension here. So I've just added two fillets that completely round this off, a fillet that nicely rounds off this end of the block, and some fillets that not only round off this edge of the block, but also round off that edge of the hole that we made in the block. So now it has a little bit more of a realistic look to it with this rail going into a hole that has a little bit of a radius on the edge of the hole. For the next few steps I'm just going to roll forward in the feature tree to show you what I did because it's more or less a duplication of what we did back here on the back of the seat. So I'm going to hide these planes here and so for the front mounting block, we want to have a plane that is at the bottom of the block and another plane that's at the center of the rail. So just rolling forward here. Here's our plane right at the bottom of the block. Here's our plane going through the rail. And then again, we want to make a sketch on this plane here, this plane here, and extrude it up into the underside of the seat. And we want to copy this rectangle from the top layout of the rail sketch. If you want something a little bit uh, more refined looking, you don't have to have straight sides to this. These sides could always be offsets of the top view of the seat. So maybe this edge could be offset inward by about five millimeters. And that way the shape of the front mounting block will follow the contour of the inside of the seat. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna use the same method for making a hole for the front of the rail to plug into. So I've done that by drawing a rectangular sketch with a construction line and that is just a revolved cut seven millimeter diameter and that gives us that realistic edge for the rail to plug into. Without that it sort of looks like the rail is just sort of passing through the block and that the block doesn't actually have a hole going through it. Here you can see you can just perceive that sharp edge there and then we're going to be adding some fillets to this uh, as soon as we first take this hole and mirror it to the other side. So we'll use the front plane as our mirror plane and just mirror that hole to the other side. And then we can add our other fillets to finish this off. So we'll have some fillets on the long edge of the block, some fillets on the front edge, and then finally some fillets on this rear edge of the block and also the edges of the hole. Finally now, we can mirror both the rear mounting block and the rail to complete this. So I'm going to actually show you the process here. We're going to use our front plane as our mirror plane. I'm going to our mirror command. Here's my front plane as my mirror plane. And we want to make sure that we do not use features to mirror. We want to make sure we use the bodies to mirror box and that we need to select this mounting block and the rail. And by the way, when you made this front mounting block, make sure that it is not merged to the rail or, or to anything for that matter. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to mirror 
these two parts properly. So now at this point, if I roll forward to my solid bodies folder, I should have six bodies, the seat, two rails, that makes three, two mounting blocks, that makes five, and then the sixth body is the front mounting block. So that's the entire seat, and then we have just one more step to do. What we want to do is add a plane that is somewhere outboard of the seat. And we're going to use that to draw some sort of graphic onto the plane and project a cut onto the side of the seat here. So it's just going to be a very simple decoration. What I've done is just simply drawn a plane that's somewhere outboard of the seat itself. The dimension is somewhat arbitrary as long as it's out here farther than the seat is located. So in this case, I made it 90 millimeters from my front plane. And then on that plane, I just sketched whatever graphic I wanted to. In this case, it's a pretty simple text graphic. Just DSID 129 Fall 15, which is uh, the class we are taking now. And what we want to do is just make a cut projected into the side of the seat. We want to use the offset from surface option. We are going to cut just very slightly into the seat. So let me show you what that option looks like. We have a blind option, which you're all familiar with, of course, which allows us to go just some arbitrary blind distance. We also have the up to surface option where we can cut up to the surface, but we need to actually go up to the surface and then slightly past it in order to cut into that surface a tiny bit. So instead of up to surface, what we want to choose is offset from surface. It's going to go up to that surface and then into it or away from it by the offset dimension. You want to go into it just very slightly, like 0.01 millimeters. And then I'll zoom in real close here. And I'm not quite sure if it's going 1.01 millimeter past the surface or 0.1 millimeter not quite up to the surface. So if I click on my reverse button here, I see that I can't really see a difference between uh, one setting and the other. So what I'm going to do is temporarily set this to about 1 millimeter just so I can see which direction this is cutting in. So here it says one millimeter offset from surface. If I say reverse offset, we see that it suddenly is jumped in this direction, meaning that it is going into the surface now. In fact, we can see the preview sort of ending on the surface and the cut still going into it. So this turns out to be the correct direction that we want to go in. But I'm going to reset this now to about 0.01. Sometimes you have to wait a little while. I've actually added some of the time out of this and hit the check mark and I've cut very subtly into that surface. Now right now you see this is a dark blue but normally when you do the first cut or when you first do the cut it's going to have the same color as the surface that it cuts into. So what we want to do now is start assigning some colors to this. One of the advantages to not merging all these uh, features together is that we can now separately color these pieces of the seat. So we could leave the seat this sort of light blue color if we want and then we can make the rails more like a light gray or white color to stand out as if they were made out of metal. So I can go up into the solid bodies folder here. Here's my first rail and this little beach ball sets the appearances. I'm going to pull down on that little pull down. I'm going to set the body color and I'm just going to make that white for now so it stands out from everything else. And I'll go to my other mounting rail, which I'll just do that by mousing over these bodies in the solid bodies folder till I get the right item. So here's the other mounting rail. Go to my little beach ball on the body, select white. And then these mounting blocks, I'll make this dark gray color. Two of them, for some reason, are already that shade. So if I go to my first block here, 
choose the body and select like a dark gray shade. Maybe that's too dark. And the other ones have already been set to that color. We can see now that we have something that looks like a metal rod with maybe some black plastic anchors in the bottom of the seat. And then the seat is like a light blue color. If we want to see what colors are assigned to each body, we can click on this double arrow here and it shows us the colors set to each body. So white, medium gray, and white again. And then the default color for the entire file is this light blue color. Now finally, I mentioned that when we did this cut here, it was going to remain at the same color as whatever it cut into, but we want this to have a little bit of a contrasting color with respect to the background. So rolling back down to the bottom here, I'm going to click on the feature itself that made that cut, and I can assign a color to that feature. So again, I go to the Appearances Beach Ball, and in this case, I don't want to select the body, but I want to select the feature in this list here. And I can make that like a dark blue color or whatever color I want. And now we see that this has a contrast with respect to the surrounding surface of the seat. And that is our entire bicycle seat.